Hello everyone and welcome back to Goblin Nation. And now I wanted to continue our project with Erica, who is a Mixamo character, but we created a meta human head and we have our her body from Mixamo. So we'll continue because now I want to add a cloth to her. So we will have the hoodie will basically have a little bit of animation and it will react to whatever Erica is doing. Hit subscribe. We'll do it with the hood and we'll do it with that belt. Now if you remember, we have imported into Unreal two different things. If I go into models, then we'll go into Erica's body. You remember we have the rig. Here it is. And what we did in Maya, we gave the part of the belt and her hoodie and even her face and the hair, we gave it a shader. And when we imported it back into Unreal, what we did, we gave that shader a transparent shader. And what will happen is that once we hide the, the mesh, you'll see that we don't see the hoodie because it's there, but we don't see it because it is transparent. You can see that when I select the FBX, uh, we can see, or Erica's body, you see that the outline indicates that there is the hood there, but we don't see it because it is transparent. Same thing is with her belt. If, you, if I scroll, if I zoom in, you can see that you can see an orange outline of the match that is there, but we can see it because it's transparent. But now we also have a separate object, which if we go into the cloth section here and we double click on this, we see that we do have that everything that we want to add as a cloth object with animation, we have that separated. So I basically exported from Maya just the parts that I want to have animated in Unreal. And those are exactly the parts that are hidden with the shader in Unreal. Okay, so before we do anything, it really, we don't really need to show this. I just wanted to see how she looks and to work out, present to you how Erica looks in a full glory. But now we need to make sure that we have Chaos Cloth installed in Unreal. And to do so, you have to go to Edit, and go to Plugins, and here we'll check for Gloss. And when you see cloths, you, we need to activate Chaos Cloth Asset Experimental and Chaos Cloth Asset Editor. And you can see there they are experimental, so that means that there might be some bugs or mode functions and my uh, Unreal Engine might crash or fail. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to say yes to that. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. Just hold it, prove it. And the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to restart and I'll come back to you after restart and when it's all installed. So now that we're back, we have the cloth installed. What I want to do is maybe hide or even get rid of this because we know where to get it from. So I'm just going to get rid of that in the um, outliner. So it gets rid of it in our stage. But for now, what we're going to do, let's go into models. We'll go into Erica's body and into class. And here I want to create a new folder and I'll call it Chaos Class. I'll go into it and now after we installed Chaos, I'm going to right click and I'm going to write class. Uh, and we can see that we have class asset now that we have installed the plugin. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call it Erica Class. That's it. Let's go back into it. And now we need to, we have three options. So the first thing you need to do is press on the create new data flow. And here we're going to need to tell it where do you want to save it. And we'll save it to the same spot, which is under models, class, chaos class. And we'll call it Ericon new class data flow. We'll save it. And we will have something that looks like this. Let's double click on Erica Cloth Asset, and this is what opens up for us. So now we have to do a bunch of things. Don't get scared, just follow me step by step, and we'll make it uh, simple enough for you to um, repeat it whenever you need. 
Now, all, not all things are that very self-explanatory, but if you follow this, rub a, a, a snap a picture of it till you'll know exactly all the steps, you can make it work every single time. I'm going to right-click here. And here, I'm going to create static mesh, and we're going to check static mesh import. That is the first node that we're going to need to have. Now, on the right side, you can see that there's static mesh, and it says none. So if I go into it, and I want to see if I could have her cloths, because we know what we called it, and we do have the Erica cloth FBX2 rig mesh. So I'm going to click on that. Now, we can see that something populated here, and that is basically pretty much, it almost seems like the UV of that cloth and here we'll change it to 3d sin and you can see that we have let's uh get rid of the um uh, wireframe on shaded and you can see that this is our uh, mesh or our erica's cloth which is awesome that's really what we need now if i drag this to the right and i'm going to type in transfer and it says transfer skin weight. Uh, so what does that mean? Transfer skin weight is very simple. It will take weights from other objects and it will basically give the same paint weights or the same weight to this object right here. So with this does not, uh, that's why we do not like, import into Unreal. This object with uh, bones, it's not a skeletal mesh, it's just in noble mesh and that's all we need so here we will gonna check erica fbx to rig and i can see by the um the little representation i can see that that's the one that we want because i can see that the little hood if i zoom in is uh, white which means that's the one that we made transparent so i'm going to select this then what that will do it'll give us um the same paint weights on this like we have on Erica's body. What else do we need to do? I don't want the whole thing to be basically a cloth. I just want some edges, some rims maybe to be, and of course, the little belt here. On the right side here, I can see preview. And here I want to make sure that I choose Erica. Is them out. We can see her. And here, this is the animation that we can look at. And I think we do have Erica Idol, although we have her animation. And once we put this on top, we will see how it looks like. So that spine will stop this. So now we want to start painting weights on the cloth because we want to make sure that we have uh, right edges that will move around like a cloth. So if I do, I've go to matte paint here, and you see that everything turned black. And here it added another node, we'll, we'll get to it later. And we can see the representation or the way how thick it's going to be. You can see that once I paint it, it goes really, really nuts. So I'm going to undo it, and here I'm going to make sure that the brass size, it's going to be a little bit smaller, and the value and also the strength. The strength should be a little bit uh, lower than that. This is too much. So we can see that there's a little bit of a difference. So I can go back into it, and then it's even smaller. This is really, really small, but that's okay. And also, what else can we choose? This is on paint, and here we, this is important as well, but we're going to talk about it once I stop. I finish um, uh, painting, so I'm just going to paint it to here. Maybe we'll paint it. Of course, this is something that you can go back to and tweak uh, later on. This is just for, uh, for now, just to see a little bit of a movement. Okay, and let's do... The belt is section here, and maybe this section here. Okay, 
Now, if you brush board, you can see that there's paint and there's smooth. So if I press on this, it will smooth out um, as much as it could. Go and let's smooth this section here. And let's hit accept. So now we have um, the paint weights painted, which is good. Let's move on. Let's continue. Before that, that is good. We can see Aretha in it. Make weight. And here, this is the one thing that I want to make sure that you understand. Type in max uh, distance. And we're going to add another node later. And it will make sense why we had to write this down. So now that we have this, let's move on to um, the, the next node that we need to attach. It's to cut this. Then let's type in simulation. And I'm going to look for simulation default. So you can type in default config. That's the one that we need. Put it like this. And here, this is basically the... Um, the preferences or the options that we give that cloth. So you can see that there's a density here and also down here there's some options that you can tweak. And we'll see how that works. Okay. Uh, next thing we need to check for simulation max distance config. And now that we have this, if I'm going to zoom out a little bit, You have to do something here. Here, we need to choose something or we need to connect something from the name to the max distance. And if you remember, if I go into this, you can see that there's something here that is very, very similar to what we just did. Let me just you make sure that we have all of it. We see here the node max, or the name max distance, right? And that is exactly the name that we gave this one max distance. So from here we need to connect the name to the max distance weight map. So now they are connected, which is great. That's exactly what we need. Now we're going to continue on with our node base and it's not going to take too long. We're almost done. Now I'm going to write in simulation, collision, config. Great. This is for collision stuff. And now we're going to go to set is X asset. Which is kind of important because we need to would tell uh, Unreal what is the physics asset. So if I press on this, I would have to look for the right object that the Perica would have. Um, as, a, as a collision effect or something that will um, have physics on it. So now, of course, you can choose anything that you want. Like if I choose this, you can always change it as well. And now, before we finish, let's add another node. Claw it, claws, pass set, terminal. There you go. But I will see that something changed here. Now, as you can see, because of the um, collision, this is what we get. So if I press play, you can see that because of the, the, the dynamics that we have, first of all, we can see that the cloth actually moves with her skin, with her skin bind. The part hap what will happen, I'll show you what happens if we change the cloth's physics asset. So if we change it to something else, let's uh, do it to, let's say this one, then you can see that something is changed. For example, if we take this and we'll put this one, you can see we just, I just changed from Erica. It's fine. We're going to fix it all. But you can see that there is actual uh, cloth simulation here. It does move. There's a little bit of wind. There's a little bit of physics happening. Let's see the play. Yeah, 
it's, it is moving and you can see that it does get the skin weights from Erica. Well, let's um, bring back Erica here. Let's see if we have a different object with Erica without the face, maybe. Nope. So we'll use this. That seems not that at all, actually. It actually seems like it's working. So, I'm going to have this. So that's all we have for now. We, I mean, we could always go back to it. Let's just make sure that we save this. I can see that there was an asterisk on there. So, but we had the static mesh import. Then we added the transfer skin mesh. And we wanted to make sure that the skin mesh was going to come from, uh, er from Erica's FDX rig, which is our Erica. And then we add weight map so we can chain or we can paint the maps where we want the weights to happen. When we want it to start moving, the white is going to be the one that is affected by the dynamics. And then we did the simulation default config. And here we can put it. So if I change this to, let's say, uh, 0 0.5, did you can see almost already that there was a little bit more movement here. If I change this to 20, you see that it does respond. So it was 0 0.35, which is the default. If I make it 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, you can already see that it's changing. So it's a little bit lighter. If I do 0, if I do 500, it's stiffer. You can see that it's a little bit more dense, a little bit more stiff. You can see that it does change the density of the cloth, which is okay. Yeah, you can scroll down, you can really play with uh, what you want, the damping. Um, so it can move differently according to what wind you have or whatever it is that you have. But we needed to make sure that in the add weight math, remember we named it uh, max distance, which is basically what we needed right here. Max distance, it has to be the same name. And make sure that the pink arrow is connected, named to max distance weight math. Great. Then we had to add the simulation collision config. Again, you can, there's some more options here that you can play around with. Put up some numbers and check what works for you. Then it's set physics asset. And then this is where you need to either add about uh, Erica. Right now, this is working. If you have your character and it gives you this, because what happens is, if I open up Erica's physics, which is right here, we can see what causes this to happen. These physics tapes, which is the head, basically, you can tweak them around. If you scale them down, These all these objects are basically aligned with um, Erica's joints so you can really play around with it you can then you can move them around and make sure that you have the right size that you want the physics to work with her claws so if i scaled it down i can move it kill it a little bit higher you can really make a difference like this you can really uh shape the way you want. At the moment, what I just checked works pretty well. So if I scale it down even further, just to the size of her head, maybe. Let's uh, rotate it because we just need this area to be affected. I'm just going to put something that looks kind of like where the face is, which is fine with me. And this part, which is her body, I will scale it down and maybe move it a little bit down so it doesn't really interfere with our cloth. Make sure that what happens here is doing the same thing. So this is the thigh, so I can scale it down because we want the belt to also um, be affected properly. So you take your time and scale down those physics shapes so that the cloth would behave and act the way you want it to. That's another PE kind of did something really fast just to make sure that maybe the physics 
objects are a little bit more acceptable to what we need. Tibet put this here so it doesn't go into her body and that's good. So let's save this and let's go back to our cloths. Okay, so now that we are back, let's change it back to Erica's physics acid, which is the one that we just manipulated. And we can see that we don't have that weird, we don't have that weird thing that was all blown up in the front. Let's see in the back. We can see that there is a nice, uh, a nicer representation of that back, which is great. That's what we need. So now let's go and see what we do in the scene. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to close this. And if we go back to the cloth, because that's where we added those notes. Don't forget, these aren't the notes. And now we need to make sure that we have Erica with the cloths. So how do we do that? It's not a problem at all. If I select our Erica right here, and if I scroll down here, now we need to make sure that we add the cloth that we just created. So to do that, we don't need to add or we don't need to drop into the scene anything. All we have to do is go into the details of our Erica, press on the add, and here I'm going to type in cloths. <laughs> And look at this, Chaos Cloth Component. So I'm going to press on that, and I can call it Erica Cloths. I'm going to press on Enter. If I select this, I'm going to scroll down and look for the cloth asset. So once I press on this, there we go. This is our cloth asset. I'm going to add that, and we have Erica's cloths on her the same way that we wanted to be and because remember because we have made the shader transparent we don't see that white representation that we saw earlier I mean, in order to watch this play all you have to do is if I press on if I go here it's going to be selected viewport which is it means it's going to play the animation but what we need to do we need to make sure and remember press on this we need to make sure that we are on simulate and that when we're going to see the cloth in motion if i press play you will see that it is working in the scene if i'm going to press on f10 so we can see the whole thing and you can see that uh, the cloth is moving or is actually it drops down with side dynamics and of course you can also change your dynamics you can make sure that the gravity is a little bit different if i move around but let's give her animation and see what happens when we do give her a little bit of animation so we do have a sequencer and we have a we have her muted right now so if i do with animation i have an idle so i will right click and i'm going to make it active so we can see that she immediately went into the idle mode and now if i simulate again the cloths would have her moving on her when she's posed there you go so we do have a cloth now it would work if her head moves now we can see that there are some issues with penetration of the jaw into uh, the, the cloth the hood right here and it is something that you can always go and change and even when you're done you can also change a little bit of the, the animation according to what you really need and of course once i uh, stop it she's still doing the the animation but the 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 cloth is moving with the skin weights of her rig but the animation or the the cloth is not being simulated and so now if i want to fix this section i want to make sure that this section also gets a uh, weight Right. So we make sure that burden pain, we can change the, uh, the radius of uh, our paint brush. And now I will just make sure that it's on one. And we'll just paint what I need for it to do. And I will change it to smooth. So it smooth it out a little bit more. Maybe take it strength, take it a little bit lower so it's not as dominant 
accept it and see what happens. As you can see, up, uh, up down it, I have painted the weights and it's very, very strong here. Of course, you can tweak it. You can go, hey, go ahead and tweak it the way you want, make it a little bit maybe less dominant. Uh, you can do it with the strength and, of course, with the opacity and, of course, with the smoothness. You can always play with that. But don't forget that you can also play with um, the dynamic aspect, aspect of it, which means you can also play with the gravity. If I go into the simulation and remember we did like a strong density of 500 when the dude uh, original one was 35. But if you go down here, let's look for something that might be a little bit uh, just to see that you can tweak so many things to drag the lift and get it changed to, to, to drag the value, the low and the high. But let's change the gravity. Let's do gravity 0.2. So it doesn't have a strong gravity. See that this is looking a little bit better. If you can do uh, 5, you'll see that it will drape a little strongly. But, uh, so let's do 0 0.5. So it will drape, but, uh, you know, as strong, let's do it a little bit smaller. Let's do 5, 5. So we do have something going on here. Let's see how it looks in the scene. Let's save this. And here, let's play our animation. We did simulate. You know, I'll play the animation. I'm hitting shift and shift and space far. And we have our idle animation playing. The wind is blowing. And you can see that uh, we have the cloth moving to whether we like it or not. This is something that you can tweak according to your scene or according to your project. But as long as you know where to go to and what to tweak, and you can go ahead and play around with the numbers or whatever it is that you need. Hope you really enjoyed it and you learned something and you will implement all those things in your project. And now uh, see you in the next video, guys. And really, until the next time. Observation.